one. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome to BRTW. Uh, this is our Melanated Mondays. Um, we have a great cast and we are featuring a piece by Nay Harris. And we'll get started with the introduction of the cast. Um, we have D-Wave, Augustine, Glove reading for Angela, Kalala, Chiwanuka, Warnley reading Pixie, Angelique Dina reading for Gina, and I, Casanova Unitas Jr. reading for Ray and Stage Directions. And this is Glitter Bracelets by Nay Harris. Setting 2018, a bookstore on a rainy Thursday afternoon. Angela sits at a wooden table, reading a book and taking notes. As Angela sits reading, Pixie and Gina sit at another table a few feet away, trying to look inconspicuous. Ray squeezes Pixie's hand. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize. Gina, look. What you do now? I'll cough with some grace or some shit? I changed reading positions. Oh, so cute. Wow, she moved an entire arm. She's so versatile. But is this what you do when I'm not with you? Just people watch? No, just her. At least her hair is on point. Coconut oil and bliss. Yeah, that's not creepy at all, Pixie Stick. Uh, this is what, the third time you've seen her here and you still haven't made a move yet? I'm taking it slow. Did you introduce yourself at least? Our eyes met briefly. So we're moving at the speed of an iceberg, huh? Okay, why am I even here? I could be at home watching reruns of Empire. To help me. Nah, not the only one who needs help. It's old girl at the register trying to rock a lopsided bob with that bone structure. Oh, just embarrassing. Not the point. What the fuck is? Oh, you just staring at her like a baby Jeffrey Dahmer, which makes no sense because she ain't that cute. She looks mad stuck up. She's not. Oh, how would you know that? You ain't even talked to her yet. Her books. Books do not make a human pixie stick. Alice Walker, Angela Davis, Nikki Giovanni. Uh, green beans, potatoes, tomatoes, eggplant parmesan. I come out a lot of a list of things, too. That's what she's reading about. Okay, and? She cares about people. You can't judge someone based on the books they're reading. But, but then again, you've always been a nerd. You did your homework, too you offered and I wasn't gonna say no well, you gonna ask her out or what because I have a date tonight lucky you no don't hate we're just trying to get you a date right now but you won't go and ask I have to figure out the plan we were up almost all night going over the million and two different ways you could ask her out just go and say hi, and then y'all can date, and you'll start moping around the house talking about how lonely you are. And then I can get some peace of mind, because real talk, you masturbating is one of the saddest sounds I have ever heard in my life. Gina! No shade, just saying. <laughs> now go over there. Oh, I can't. My arms itch. Oh, stop scratching. You'll pick off the scab. I'm all nerves. Angela gets up to purchase books and begins packing up her bag. Oh, no, she's leaving. Oh, go ask her out. I don't have band-aids. Let's go home. Yeah, we're not doing this. Come on. She grasps Pixie's hand and pushes her in front, moving towards Angela. Ray stands at the table, drinking from Pixie's cup. Oh, I, I have to think. Don't think, just do. 
Now breathe. Can I help you? Come on, ask her. A lot of sticky notes. Um, I got it from Staples. It was on sale. Really dope. Are you all right? I think you're very attractive and I'd like to take you on a date. Okay. Um, thank you. Maybe we should start with names first. Hi, I'm Angela Walker. Right, names, important. Angela, nice name. Have you had it long? Of course you've had it. It's your name. You've had it forever. Unless you recently changed your name, then you wouldn't have had it forever. And I'm Gina. Nice to meet you, Gina. And this adorable rambler here is Charlene. Pleasure to meet you. You can call me Pixie. Everyone does. How about we have coffee? Great. Yeah, how's Saturday? I can't. I have a paper due Monday that I've barely started. Right. That makes total sense. When are you free? I was hoping we could grab coffee now, actually. As in this current point in time? Yeah, is that okay? I only have about an hour, but there's a cafe right here, so we don't have to waste time finding one. If not, I completely understand. Um, could you wait here a sec? I need to converse with Gina regarding a topic of absolutely no importance to you. Uh... Okay. Excuse us a moment. I can't have coffee right now. Oh, what you mean you can't? Oh, when your opportunity here and she just opened the damn window. We have nothing to talk about. Just say what we, what we went over last night. I forgot everything. You forgot my brilliant one-liner? I am highly offended. You know, be petty later. This is serious. Well, I don't, well, I don't know. Now, it does seem hella sketch that she would say yeah right off the bat with conditions. Like, what if you had shit to do right now? I mean, you don't because you don't have no social life. But like, what if? I'm going home. Nah, no, just be yourself. I'll scare her. Only if you try to be someone else. Now, you got this pixie stick. Gina turns and motions for Angela to walk over, which she does. Are we all set or do you have plans? Yeah, she is. Now, y'all have fun and don't get too wet and wild talking about books. <laughs> no. Alrighty, bye. Angela and Pixie walk over to a small square table with two chairs. Pixie sits and Angela places her bag and coat down on the other chair. So, how do you take your coffee? I don't drink coffee. It makes me anxious. Can I have a hot cocoa, please? Sure, I'll go see what they have. Do you want peppermint or a white hot chocolate? I'll just come with you. It's all right. I've got it. And here, take this. I'm buying. Please take it. No, it's on me. Especially since you agreed to this on such short notice. How do you take your cocoa? Oh, not cow's milk, please. Coming right up. Angela exits. <sighs> Don't guess. Just do. You've got this. You are calm, cool, and collected. Cool cucumber, but smooth operator. She's beautiful, but she's also a person. Or is it? And a person. She's both. It's fine. You're an adult who can get through one date without having a panic attack. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. And do what? Yeah. Pixie jolts and bumps into the table, causing the cups to almost topple over. But both Angela and Pixie grab the table with both hands, steadying it. Sorry, I'm not usually so jumpy, I promise. It's all right. No harm done. A small hot chocolate with milk, right? Uh, you said oat milk, right? Not cow? Fuck, I'm sorry. I'll get you another. No, it, it's okay, really. No, it's not. I'm getting you another. My mistake. I have to fix it. She seems sweet. Right. She's so sweet. Why are you still here? You look like you need a hug. Hug? Now's not really a good time. I'm kind of on a date. Besides, I'm out of Neosporin. 
You know she won't see me, but I'll be watching. Here you are. Sorry about the mix-up. That's no problem. Angela picks the drink in silence for a moment. And sorry you have so much homework. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Comes with the scholastic territory. You in school? Nah, working. Saving up to go back. Where do you work? At Sherry's Follicle Boutique. I wash hair. I've always liked playing with and styling hair ever since I was a kid. Oh, that's interesting. How'd you get into that? Gina's a stylist there. She got me the job when I took a break from school. I'm working my way up. I'll hopefully have my own chair by the end of the year. Lots of my specialty, though. Hers are so well done. Who does them? I usually do them when I have the time. My mother also insists on doing my hair almost every time I go back home to visit. She claims that I never retwist them properly. Have you seen her recently? No, she usually just calls me a few times a week. Well, then I think you've done a fantastic job. And this is coming from a professional. Then I accept that as the highest of compliments. <laughs> they both reach for a napkin simultaneously, and the tips of their fingers lightly brush against each other. Pixie quickly withdraws her hand, and Angela passes her napkin before taking one for herself. Thanks. You can tell a lot about a person from their hair, sort of like a preview of their personality. Interesting. So what does my hair say about mine? I'm not gonna answer that. I'm trying to woo you, not make you hate me. Why would I hate you? People don't like when I read them, it's nosy. It's not being nosy if I ask. I'm very intrigued. Please, tell me. All right. The top half of your hair is in a tight bun, meaning you're usually all business, but you've left the rest of your locks out, meaning you're gonna have fun, but not too much. The ones in the front look very neat and precise, so you're all about cleanliness and making good first impressions anywhere you go. Wow. I'm sorry, I said too much, didn't I? No, you were spot on. You got all that for my hair? And what you mean, at least the ones in the front look neat? You trying to say the rest of my head looks raggedy? No, no, of course not. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, hey, I was just joking. It's okay. Joking. I, I, I really didn't mean anything by it. I just, I, fuck me. Ask nicely first. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, you sure you're not psychic? No, but your clothes are also a giveaway. The leather strap on your watch is worn down because you wear it every day. So time is important to you. Your sweater, vest, and tweed jacket with elbow patches give off a strong, sexy British-English professor vibe. Then I must be doing something, right? Wardrobe-wise. <laughs> I'm studying to be a professor, but history and sociology, though, not English. Awesome. You're amazing. You're too cute. You think I'm cute? I meant cute in a sexy way, not like in a childish way or anything. Oh. That's good, because you said I was sexy earlier, and I thought you were trying to take back the compliment. I I didn't say you were sexy. Sexy British English professor vibes. Your words about me, therefore you think I'm sexy. Yeah, but I mean, well, you're very attractive, and I'm just going to stop talking now. There's no need for you to stop talking. You're cute when you ramble in a sexy way. An alarm on Angela's phone goes off. Damn, I have class soon. I'm sorry to cut this so short. No, totally get it. You're very busy. It was really nice meeting you. Meeting me? Are you leaving the country sometime soon? Because I was hoping we could continue this conversation. Maybe over dinner? You want to see me again? Of course, why wouldn't I? I just feel like I've bombarded you with a bunch of assumptions and shit at small talk. So am I. And all of your assumptions were right, though. I hope I wasn't rude. I'm sorry if I was. No, you weren't. You're definitely a breath of fresh air. Well, feel free to keep breathing me in. I plan to. Here, send me a text. Then I'll have your number. 
Let me know when you're free and we'll go from there. Sure thing. Bye. Pixie extends her hand and moves forward, tripping over Angela's bag and headbutting Angela's sternum. Angela holds her fast so she doesn't hit the floor. I'm so sorry. I'm a fucking klutz. Did I hurt you? I'm good. If you wanted a hug, all you had to do was ask. Is your head okay? As okay as it, it'll ever be. I'm really sorry. No harm done. I look forward to seeing you again soon, Pixie. Angela hugs Pixie. Pixie hugs her back. Angela exits. Feel free to keep breathing me in. Really? <sighs> Scene two. Over a week later. A nice enough day in Central Park by the roller skating circle. Pixie and Angela have set up a picnic blanket with food. Angela's napping. Her head is in Pixie's lap. Ray sits crisscross applesauce eating a carrot stick. Pixie watches the skaters and takes in the sun and fresh air, softly stroking Angela's hair. Hey, how long was I out? Only 15 minutes. Only? That's a long time to nap during a date. You look like you were having good dreams. I didn't want to wake you. I don't think I was dreaming. The only thing that was remotely dreamlike about this nap was waking up and seeing you. You see, is 15 minutes even long enough to dream? Do you remember your dreams? I don't think I really dream, and if I do, I don't remember any of them. Really? I have weird dreams all the time. Probably says a lot about me as a person, and I remember most of them. What about daydreams? Everyone daydreams. And what do you daydream about? Graduation. Well, that makes sense. I suppose everyone daydreams about graduating when they're in school. I don't mean my graduation. I daydream about my future students graduating, introducing me to their parents and telling them what an impact my class had on, the, on their lives. Being the reason they come back to college to visit, knowing that I'll make a difference in people's lives. Wow. And I know it's really self-absorbed. No, no, not at all. That's beautiful. The fact that you want to change people's lives. Thanks. What about you? I'm sure your dreams are a lot more exciting than mine. Well, they're exciting, but not in a very good way. How so? Angela phones me. Sorry, it's my mom. You should answer. It could be really important. I can... Just call her back, it's fine. No, really, I have to pee anyway, so you'll have some privacy. Pixie exits. Hey mom, is everything okay? Then can I call you back later? I'm in the middle of something. Yes, it's very important. I'm taking a break from studying at the moment. I know school's important. I've been working all week, mom. I'm just taking a small break. I also know that school's expensive, which is why I'm getting all A's. I won't let you down, mom. Love you too. Bye. Pixie returns. So how's mom? She, she's fine. Just wanted to know how the studying was going. I couldn't tell her that I was on a date or else I'd never get off the phone. Okay. I. What happened to your eyebrow? My eyebrow? When you've been picking up, there's a bit of a, a gap there towards the end, no hair. Oh, um, playground accident when I was a kid. I had to get stitches, but the hair never really grew back. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to pry or remind you painful memories. I'm it's totally fine. It just itches more than anything else. Yeah, itching is the worst. Looks like you have a scar or two of your own. Hmm? Pointing to Pixie's wrists, which are exposed since the R warmers are rolled up slightly, a few scars are visible on one wrist. Those, where are they from? A roller skating accident fell and stood on asphalt. Scraped my wrist pretty badly. Damn, sounds rough. Is that why you wear those? 
One of the reasons. Sorry, I had to wash my hands. Um, There's nothing to be sorry about. It's just one of the reasons. Yeah, the other reasons aren't important. Seems like they're very important and you just don't want to say. Am I not allowed to have secrets? I don't do too well with secrets. Is that? One day you're going to tell me about those arm warmers. Maybe one day, yes. But it is not this day. All right, now let it go for now, Aragorn. I have to admit, that's one of the best speeches in the Lord of the Rings film trilogy. So passionate the way he says it. It just gives you hope for a better tomorrow. You're my guarantee of a better tomorrow. They kiss. The kiss deepens as kisses tend to do sometimes. And there's touching. Then Pixie pulls away. Almost forgot we're outside amongst humankind. This isn't the place. So yours or mine? I haven't been to your place yet. There's a lot going on over there where I, the, the roof of the building is getting replaced. The entire roof? Yep. It was raining most of the week. I wear a lot of ponchos. Just ponchos? Just ponchos and arm warmers, not even underwear. Why does that sound sexy as hell to me? Because I'm sexy as hell, duh. I'll never argue against that. And you shouldn't, because you'd lose. Scene three. A few nights later, Gina exits the apartment building and sits on the stoop, sniffling and wiping her face. Setting her phone down next to her, she tries to steady her hands as she takes a cigarette out of the bent-up pack and sticks it in her mouth. Ray appears and leans against the railing. Gina pats her jacket and boobs for a lighter until Ray pulls one out and lights Gina's cigarette, leaving the lighter in her, in her lap. Angela approaches with a sunflower and a bag of candy. Gina, hey, what's up? Angela, hey. It's been a minute. How you been? Can't complain. You? You know, those are bad for you. I'll take my chances. And I could definitely complain, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Hope the night gets better for you. Pixie home? Yeah. She didn't text you? Not since this morning. Is she okay? Uh, Pixie's been having an, a really rough day. She's not going to be able to make it tonight. She says she texted you. Oh, I'll go up and check on her. But I, I'm not supposed to let you upstairs. Now, Pixie said that she's really sorry, but she can't see you tonight. Gina puts another cigarette to her lips and Ray lights that one as well. Did I... Is she upset with me? She's upset, but not with you. I, I tell you if she was. I can give her the flowers and candy now, or if you want, uh, you can bring them back another time. Maybe if she sees me, she'll... I'm telling you, she repeatedly told me, make sure you don't let her see me like this. Like what? Did something happen to her? No. She just... She just hasn't left her bed all day, and she feels gross. What are a few new stripes to an old tiger? So she just needs to sleep. Maybe try calling her tomorrow afternoon. Oh, all right. Will do. Give her these for me, please. I hope they'll lift her spirits a bit. I'm sure they will. Now take it easy. I'll try. Look after her, please. I always do. See you later. Angela exits. Gina sits back down and keeps smoking. Ray sits next to her and starts picking the petals of, off of the sunflower as the lights fade. Scene four. A month and a half later, Gina and Pixie's apartment. Pixie's room. Think bright and bold colors everywhere. There are swatches of different paints on the walls. It's, it's a lot to take in. There's a large pile of clothes on P Pissy's bed, which Gina is going through half-heartedly. 
Pixie pops out of the closet in a dress, looks in the mirror, and turns to Gina for a response. Thoughts? Well, it's very green. Plato green or seductive green? I don't even know what that means. I can't do this. Everything I own makes me look like either a 12-year-old boy or a sad hippie. Well, you could always borrow something from me. No, I can't, Miss Seven Feet Tall Supermodel. Everything you own is baggy on me. Even your extra short dresses make me look like some prude housewife. One, you're exaggerating. And two, there are a lot of great outfits that you hear that you can wear tonight. You're clearly overwhelmed, so what's up? What do you mean? Nothing's up. Everything's fine. Fine, my ass. Like, you've been hella flustered for the past two days trying to find something to wear for tonight. So what gives? Nothing. It's just... It's, well, this date is a big deal. More so than the other? How? Well, you know, we've had a lot of coffee dates and dinner, and we went to that open mic night at the bistro once, and then we went skating, and... I, I, I remember you practically gave me a whole dissertation after each date when you got home. <laughs> so clearly, things are going well. What's the big deal? Angela's taking me to this really nice restaurant, and I think... I think we might have sex. Oh, I must be priced. Oh, she's finally about to get some after a century of celibacy. Oh, praise him. Rude as hell. Oh, you know I'm just playing. Oh, but seriously, you dusted all the cobwebs off your cooch before your shower, right? You need a hug? Hug? Yeah. Come on, I'm just happy for you. I'm just cracking jokes. Well, this ain't funny. It's fucking serious. Why is this so serious? You ain't a virgin. Might as well be at this point. Because I haven't told her yet. About... You haven't told her yet? But how the hell did you manage to evade that conversation? She hasn't asked you why you're always in arm warmers? Now me. I'm a master evader. Lie after lie after lie. And she has, but every time she asks, I ask her about classes or feign an illness or go home. But I think she really wants me. Well, you fine as fuck, and it's obvious to tell that she knows that. And I definitely want her, and I just... I couldn't handle it if she got disgusted and left once I took these off. Hey, that will not happen, okay? It might. If it does, yeah. I'll kill her, and then you'll have to help me get rid of her body. Hmm. <laughs> but no, I don't think you're giving Angela enough credit here. Well, she's a big-ass nerd, just like you. If she hasn't figured it out already, I'm sure she'll understand once you tell her. Think so? Doubt it. Yeah, I do. And if she leaves, then she's a fuckwad, and you deserve better anyway. You're... You're right. Everything will be fine. I'm panicking unnecessarily. Anxiety is always necessary. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. But tonight's going to go great. Now, what color are you feeling right now? Crimson. Purple. Definitely purple. Oh, purple, purple, purple. Mm. Oh, yep. Yeah. What about the cocktail dress I got for you for Christmas last year? The one with the rhinestones that you liked because you said they looked like stars? I love that one. But I've never really had a reason to wear it. Well, what a better reason to wear it than to get some. <laughs> oh, and you can wear those long black gloves that your dad got you. Oh, you'll have a, a Dorothy Dandress-esque look going on. You're amazing. Yeah, I know. Hmm. <laughs> Now, what you want me to do with your hair and decide quick, because uh, Deacon's coming to pick me up soon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just want to thank our cast. Um, reading this piece again by our playwright, May Harris, who is our guest for today's Melanated Mondays. Um, a little bit about 
Mayharis. They are a graduate from Bard College at Simon Simon's Rock, majoring in uh, African American Studies and Theater for Social Change, a self-constructed major combining sociology and theater. They're also a National Theater Institute and advanced playwriting alum of the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center, as well as an inspiring professional dominatrix. It long been a, a poet and now playwright, lyricist, and librarist. One of their main goals as a writer is to further alleviate stigmas and stereotypes regarding mental illness in the Black community and to raise awareness and create more access to mental health resources, especially for Black and other LGBTQ youth of color, as well as increasing media representation of Black, queer, and non-binary love and joy. They are also an advocate for the safety of sex workers, specifically within BDSM community, and currently writing a musical, Club Letter Queen about professional dom dominatrices uh, who are queer and of color. They completed a playwriting 102 course at the New York Theater Workshop with instructor and renowned playwright, Kate Moray Bryant. Among their works are Wounded Skies, Glitter Bracelets, Take a Number and Wait, When I Grow Up I Wanna Be, and All the Conversations You Wish You Had. But never did end the role. May is currently attending NYU's graduate musical theater writing program as a word person. And we would like to welcome them to Melanated Mondays. Hello, greetings and salutations. Hello, hello. How you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. Um, will the cast like to introduce um, themselves and the character that they work tonight? Hi, I'm D-Way Augustine Glaive, and I read for Angela. Hi, I'm Kalala Chwana Kawrinley, and I read for Pixie. Hi, I'm Angelique Montemayo Falasha de Cedina, and I read for Gina. And I am Casagnol Leonidas Jr., tonight's host, and I read for Ray. Um, Nay, would you like to introduce yourself and um, what inspired you to write Glitter Bracelets? Most definitely. First and foremost, thank you to all of you for reading. I really appreciate it. You have given me like new ideals already for future edits. Um, Lord, where to start? I first started working on glitter bracelets in 2017, like after I graduated. And I used to have like a whole lot of conversations with a lot of my friends about like dating and timelines and sort of how like these like different social like milestones like first dates or first kisses like very much happen like later on in life for like queer people as opposed to like straight people and really just sort of attempting to figure out or explore like what does that look like and like what does dating in general because it's so awkward there's so much around <laughs> dating and connecting with other people but very much so like what does it mean to attempt to like live your life or figure out what your life is when you've gone through the majority of your life with the mentality of I'm going to kill myself eventually and so like what does that mean to like ignore or to attempt to put sort of like that voice on the back burner and actually like put yourself out there to like reach those milestones and actually join society in whatever way that means. And so it very much just sort of started out as like a test run of sorts of just like trying to imagine like what asking someone out is like from an outsider's perspective. Cause I know in my head, anytime I try to ask somebody out, like my mind is going like a mile a minute and really just seeing how like what the trajectory of that relationship would look like while also 
attempting to play around with like my own like worst fears being realized in a relationship and what that would look like. So yeah. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Um, yeah, a lot of your work centers around like what is unspoken, and um, it 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 usually gives like a perspective that a lot of people don't know. So, um, like how how do you hone like the subtleties of like interpersonal relationships in in your work? Oof, that's a great question. <laughs> um. Honestly, I just do a whole lot of people watching, which I feel like as artists, like that's a big part of what we do. <laughs> but I like recently discovered that I'm most likely on the autism spectrum as well. And that's also been putting a lot of things into perspective for me, like looking back on my life and like the way that I've interacted with people, because I very much find myself like mirroring people physically. Uh, like when I'm having conversations with them like if they're just like chilling like this then at some point in time in the conversation I realize that I've also started doing this <laughs> like things to that effect and very much so like how to like break out of that and really just trying to figure out because I'm like really bad at picking up like social cues <laughs> so like it's a work in progress like getting better at it so like I've always been slightly better at like noticing like people's changes in like their inflection or like their tone or like their physical movements to sort of give me some sort of inkling about whether or not the conversation is headed in a like good direction for them and so I feel like that's sort of also how I really went about like unpacking this piece as well and just sort of thinking more so about different coping mechanisms and healthy or unhealthy and like how do like we each individually define like what a healthy coping mechanism is and also just like seeing how it very much affects people differently because that's sort of where like the character of Ray came into play because up until like last fall Ray was not in this piece and but hey it was like so great because I told them I was like I kind of want to add a new character and she was like go for it and I was like bet <laughs> so very much just thinking about like Ray as sort of a personification of like unhealthy coping mechanisms or these sort of habits that people have that they may not even be aware of as sort of being unhealthy or toxic and sort of definitely wanting to see more like how Ray interacts or doesn't interact with like each of like these three characters is something that's been on like the forefront of my brain as a result for like a while now. I don't even know if that answered your question. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it did. Um, and, and actually segues into um, our next question here because um, you touched upon like the addition of Ray and, and, and how like that, that character like um coincides with um like trauma like that that some people you know experience and um um probably keep to themselves so like so like given given you know the the, the pressure for black writers like to mind trauma and, and and even to address um topics with 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 a sense of despair like how do you how do you incorporate um even though we kind of seen that um at least at least for me um the playfulness and romance into your writing um uh, like I definitely saw between uh, Pixie and Angela, um, like like how do you how do you how you how are you able to um, I guess like interweave that on top of like despair and, and the seriousness of, of the trauma. Oof. That's a great question. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've always had like a very dark sense of humor, which everyone has like always commented on at some point in time of my life. And that's like one of my few saving graces because I consistently write about like a lot of like darker, heavy subjects. So being able to like laugh about it or like having characters being able to like sort of have those moments, I feel like is very important, especially even just like thinking about like life and the way that it works and that, yeah, there is very much oftentimes like a lot of tragedy, but there are also like a lot of like very deep, like, gut shaking like laughter like in between those moments also and like the very importance 
of like joy in and of itself because I feel like my biggest issue is very much like as you were talking about like that black writers are so pressured to come from to like speak or write from a place of like pain and how do we still very much make space for that pain and like that healing and growth but while also very much keeping an air of lightness or like an air of joy because I feel like that's also a very large part of being able to like laugh through the pain but also how like laughter can sometimes even help us process like pain a bit easier as well and in regards to like romance I very much describe myself as a hopelessly skeptical romantic and that I very much do believe in love but I don't believe in happily ever afters and I feel like I could give a whole dissertation on why I don't believe in happily ever afters because they're capitalist propaganda and just like the whole idea of perfection with like happily ever afters of like if you wish and work hard enough for something then it will come true whereas that's not how life works and also there are a whole lot of gray areas with life so really just like trying to like mine those out and sort of bring those up to like the forefront a bit more of like how do we still maintain moments of happiness and how do we at least get some semblance of a happy ending that doesn't feel performative it's like something that I've been thinking about a lot so but yes yeah, yeah I, I definitely respect that um like the whole fairy tale aspect of like happy ever after um definitely feels like forced and um inauthentic so you know um the whole idea of like being with someone and, and growing i think is is more um fulfilling um but yeah, yeah thank you thank you um but yeah so like you know you know given you know uh, uh the ways in which like Black people have to navigate various social gazes and 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 uh, the the pressures to be our performed selves in order to to be our embodied selves. Um, I, this is like an open question for for each of us. Um, how do we like navigate the balance of choosing community and individual connection in both mental well being and uh, pleasure? Um, if anyone likes to. Take a take a take a, take a little stab at that real quick. I'm sorry. Can you repeat oh, the question? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I just wanted to hear the question one more time. Absolutely, I got you. Uh, how do we how do we navigate um a balance of choosing community and individual connection in both mental well-being and pleasure uh, thank you for repeating that because i was going to say something completely different ah! <laughs> um i like speaking from the eye um i've been navigating just what my community looks like and what my community that I'm starting to form and be a part of is a community that also values uh, well-being and pleasure. Because um, for me, my community is a representation of who I am, but an extended uh, representation created by our lovely ancestors, putting us on this path and journey. Um, so what I what I've been coming to terms with is that if the individual, me, meaning myself, if if I if my journey of well being and pleasure is not sitting right with the people that I break bread with, then I just got to break that bond. Um, because before, um, I wouldn't really, I I wouldn't really think too much about. It. I'd be like, oh, okay, I'll just be a different person in this setting, and then I'll collect myself after, not realizing that I was separating myself and trying to exist in spaces that just do not accept me for whatever reason being and that was as many spaces including in ti um but i had to, I had to realize you know what that that if that's the way that this world's gonna work that's not the way my ancestors want me to live that's not the way god wants me to live i'm not gonna be doing that no more point blank period um but i put my wellness and self and and uh well-being and pleasure 
above all else because if I'm not taking care of me I cannot be a part of a community because I can't be the community member that I need it to be and that I also depend on um I can't ask for something that I can't give myself Yeah, I think for me, so I'm a very extroverted person in general. So the community part, I've had the blessing of just like always been surrounded by really good people. And I think that also comes from like, I'm Ugandan. And so that's all about community. It's people. And so everywhere that my mom's gone, it's always like you invite people to everything. So I think the people around is always there. But the individual relationship to self is something that I've had to learn as I've gotten older of like, what are the things that I like? What is bringing me pleasure? And also, how do I sit and spend time by myself? Um, so I recently graduated college and like now not being in the setting of around people all the time, it's like, OK, what do I do? And it's just me. Like, what am I doing? And so learning about the things that I really like, like I started reading again or I'll just like go and have dinner by myself and just like finding those moments to actually reflect and be like, how are we showing up in the world? What are we liking? What are we not liking? Um, and also just like doing things that I just like, like, and I, like Angelique said, the better that you are in yourself is going to improve your community. And if everyone is functioning at their highest vibration level or whatever, it's just going to create a different like energy for all people, you know? Um, but yeah, I think it starts with the self because if you're good and you're solid in who you are, your ancestors, where you're coming from, then it goes from there. So, but I think that especially for black and brown people, we need to take more time to just focus on self. And then also how does it extend to the broader community as well? So, yeah. Yeah, I definitely resonate with what both Angelique and Kalala have said, I'm also like a recent college grad. And I think something I've been navigating is like finding, it's like re-finding a community. I think I've also, I've been blessed to have found and made homes and community wherever I go. I feel like the universe spirit just brings me into places and brings me towards people that are caring and like kind and open. And I've just been very blessed to have experienced that. And I think what's important as I am not like living on campus with all my friends is to like find new community and also rely on my community that I do find because I think it can be very easy for me to solely rely on myself and to solely build up that internal world and to like make sure that that is so solid to the point where it is impenetrable and like learning vulnerability through like relying on others and like depending on my community when I can't show up for myself fully knowing that there are people who love me and who can support me in those ways and like not just knowing that but utilizing that and like allowing myself to be vulnerable in that way is something that I've been navigating for sure definitely definitely absolutely like like to all you sisters like um I gotta, I gotta agree with that as well because um, I know, I know, like, you know, the things that I've experienced, um, and in, you know, even during that time, like, I had a different outlook, and the community that I was around with uh, was different as, as, uh, you know, comparative to to the community I'm in now, and and uh, I realized that um, it's very fluid, like, um, like. You know, there there's that there's that um that com that commonality that 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 I'm that I'm hearing um like it starts with yourself as it continues outward. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's like that mustard seed um uh, metaphor um and like through like weeds and like thickets and all that jazz. Like once we break out of that, you know, we're we're exposed to a whole new um, atmosphere and 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 how does that you know with all the weather all the rain all the seasons how how does that impact that mustard seed and, and what would that grow into um and and even you know the the newer communities um that we have yet to meet um you know you know from divine guidance uh, from the most high or, or even our ancestors um what would that like like not only do to us but to to, to them um but I think, yeah, yeah, like, like, 
once once we start healing, we're able to heal others. You know what I'm saying? And and continue continue on that path of of healing. Because um, frankly, I believe like we're we're constantly healing, and, and it really never ends. But um, you know, we we reach that point of um, growth that and safety that we're able to be more open and and um, be more engaging. Um, so so yeah, absolutely. Um, Nate, uh, would you like to add as well? Um, to, to oh, question? most definitely. Everything y'all said was ridiculously relatable. So, <laughs> mm. but very accurate and just. I have noticed that I am very much currently at this point in time trying to get better at sharing the internal, or at least some internal parts of myself, with my communities. Because, like, it's sort of similar to, like, what Dewey was saying of not having mastered vulnerability. <laughs> Just for a very long time, like, my entire, I attached, like, my entire identity to either grades in school or my usefulness of how I was able to help people. And so, to the point where, like, my therapist is like, that's not healthy. I'm like, hey, I know that. <laughs> it's a work in progress. Um, so, uh very much just because I've grown way too, I want to say that I've grown too content with like being by myself, but I think very much being able or getting back to like relating and like pouring back into my communities is something that like I'm working towards again, because I feel like this last like two years, there's been a whole lot of self-reflection <laughs> that has happened. And so I'm still definitely trying to make sense of a lot of it. But it is also this thing of trying to be a bit more vocal to like people. And I try to make it a point to tell people more that I appreciate them or try to get better at like reaching out to people with like good vibes or well wishes as opposed to completely like isolating when I don't feel mentally great, which is what I usually do. So I think it very much is just a consistent thing of attempting and like reminding ourselves to like give ourselves a whole lot of grace a lot more than the world or like the society has given us and that it is okay to take several breaths and to just be in this moment and then move to the next moment without having a plan for the next moment and working on just being present more I think is something that I've definitely been focusing on a lot more recently but yeah thank you y'all thank you and uh you know to close we got a uh, just three questions um what should every member of our community know about this topic we can start with that one one that i really like i appreciate this um, play so much because I have not encountered any work like as a theater major as someone who like has taken so many African studies courses like there is not content that is exploring mental health in this way it's always just on how like mental health impacts and can like tear down communities like in an external way but not so much on how it can like manifest internally in physically and how self-harm can um, impact a person. And just seeing that on stage, like seeing that in a play was really powerful to me. And I think this wasn't the only narrative that I encountered growing up, but I think one of the most harmful narratives that I heard about self-harm as a kid was that it was like something that someone would do for like attention or I think that was like very harmful to hear and very harmful discourse that has been spread around self-harm. And so I think every member of the community should know that like, it is not a means of attention, whereas it, more so it is like something that that person deems necessary in order to survive in that people who do self-harm are in need of love and support. And that is not something that should distance them from community. It's something that should bring, that we should be looking to bring people in closer when we recognize that happening.
I think for me, what I really appreciate about this play is how it humanizes people struggling with mental health. I think often um, it's, there's not the humanity of like moments fluctuate. You can be really great and you're laughing one second and then it also it can turn it on you. And so I just like the um, fluidity of it and just showing how like it's a constant process of just living and it's gonna show up in different ways for different people and um, just how it impacts differently. And I think sometimes it's just sort of like, a this is what it is and this is how you're gonna be all the time. And it's not, and I think that's what makes it complicated and that's what makes it different for every single person and how different people's experiences and coping mechanisms are different. So I just, it's really nice to just see that in a way that it's like, this is part of the human experience. Um, and it's, it's a moment, you know, to just like reflect on an experience and there's other ones and there's also this one, so. Um, I think going off of the beautiful words that y'all just shared, you know, what members of the community should do to know, or what they should know about this topic is first and foremost, it's real. Um, I, I too, in studying theater, Africana studies, anthropology, all that cool stuff in undergrad, because I'm also a recent fan, it was, it was rough, uh, only seeing bits and pieces of the puzzle the puzzle of my my stories, my ancestors' stories, without having the whole thing, um, and only for usages of exploitation. And for me, where I'm at now, first year PhD student, God flexing, you know, cool. I'm just focusing on getting this 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 message out because I I and what I really love about this work, and thank you so much, May Harris, is actually like doing putting out the words and the materials that the community needs to know. And putting, you know, light to literature that we know to be true, but outside of this Zoom meeting and whoever on sees it, or you know, that this this might be the first time that a lot of people are hearing about this, which is just thank you, thank you for this, thank you for this. Um, and I can't wait to see what you do next with it. But I think, you know, what every member of the community needs to know about this topic is this play. This, let's start here. Uh, if if y'all don't know where else to start, let's start here. Absolutely, that's, that's perfect. And, and you know, that leads to our, our next question, like what, what should they do? And, and um, um, you know, touching upon the fact that being I guess more exposed to this type of work, this type of literature, and um, or even being inspired, you know, what I mean, to write um, and, and reach uh, communities. I, I think uh, that'll be impactful. Um, you know, again, like like you know, just just starting out that that, that that stream of water, you know, like 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 um, that 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 growth again. Um, but like, yeah, like like for for um. For the audience, like like how how can they learn more about you, May Harris? Um, like any any plug any any pluggable um, I guess uh, uh, ways of reaching you that 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 uh that you can share or or any anything new um that's on the horizon for you. Oh yes, I have I have to get better at <laughs> at like telling people things. <laughs> um. But honestly, thank you all so much because this very much does mean a lot. And I feel like that's but we're working on a, a number of a number of things right now. We're working on work. Who words? <laughs> uh we're definitely working on like a number of musicals currently and also a TV show idea that I have that also has to do with self-harm and I'm sort of like fleshing that out and creating an urban legend in the same vein so hopefully it will go well <laughs> but um lord context I'm usually Facebook and Instagram are like the only social medias that I really use nowadays so uh Instagram is Candyman's baby spawn where I also have like a lot of theater posts and discussions on mental health as well and then Facebook, I just share a lot of memes. <laughs> it's just Naomi Harris. So, but 
honestly, I really do appreciate this. And I feel like a big part of why I write is very much for like a lot of the reason that y'all have been saying and very much growing up thinking that I was like the only like black person who self-harmed and the amount of isolation that is. And so I very much at least want to do as much as I can so that no other black kid or teen or adult feels like that or has to continue going about their life not seeing themselves somewhere because as we all know like visibility is incredibly important so really just trying to increase that canon of theater as much as possible yes 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 thank you thank you uh may for um, having us be a part of this experience and and um, being able to um, share it, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, we're we're looking forward to it. You know what I mean? Like 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 let let this be, you know you know that tossing stone that skips over on the pond. You know what I'm saying? And and creating those ripples. You know what I mean? So um, thank you, thank you to the cast, thank you to the RTW as well. Um, you know. You know, I'm from I'm from Haiti, so like, you know what I mean, like, like, you know, it's like I say, not right, right, right. You know what I mean? So you know, we in it. Um, thank you, y'all. Um, beautiful folks, beautiful people. Um, if there's anything else that uh that y'all would like to share, please do. Um, and, uh, you know, we we'll, take we we'll take it we we'll take it from here, we'll take it from here. Go follow Nay on Instagram and Facebook. There Get on go. it now. They pop it off. Ew. <laughs> Thank you so much for writing this play about Black queer love, Black lesbians. We need more. Absolutely. Actually, though. <laughs>